what exactly is the XS10? And what kind of question is that for me to ask at the beginning of my review of the XS10? Well, you see, the Fujifilm XS series line of cameras did not exist before, so this is the very first of its kind. So it doesn't even have a predecessor for our expectations to even begin from. That being said, if you're not exactly a Fuji user, then the XS10 is probably going to seem like a pretty conventional, run-of-the-mill mid-range camera. But if you are into Fuji, then this is probably going to come across as quite different in a rather contemporary way. But if you're very, very into Fuji's X series, then this might even come across as maybe slightly sacrilegious. And here's why. Fuji cameras are typically quite reminiscent of traditional analog cameras. So this here is the X-T4 and it's the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Instead of digital numbers on a screen, you have very physical shutter speed and ISO dials that display absolute values for you to dial in. For example, here on the X-T4, you have an ISO dial, a shutter speed dial, and an exposure compensation dial. But on the XS10, even though it also has three dials on the top of the camera, it's now a function dial, a mode dial, and a control dial. Now, just listening to it, it might not sound like a very big deal, but if you've personally used Fuji systems before, you would understand how these old school analog dials are actually integral to the Fujifilm user experience. It changes the way you fundamentally operate your camera. And it's that along with other nuances like the grip design on Fuji cameras, they tend to have typically a flat, ish body design, like there's a bulge for the grip, but it never quite extends far outwards and with the shutter button quite in line with the main body. The XS10, on the other hand, has this full-on L-shaped body to accommodate this huge grip, and the shutter button is also, by comparison, a big fat modern one. So unless you've been completely oblivious to its modern cameras, you would realize that most modern cameras are designed more like the XS10 and less like the X-T4. So I guess you could say that the XS10 is Fuji's attempt to be a little more accommodating for the modern mass consumer. It also comes in a rather tiny package. It's probably one of the first things you would notice if you ever come across the XS10 in real life. It's almost impossible to tell from pictures, but it would probably give you a better idea if I place it side by side with the X-T4 for scale, which keep in mind is already a considerably small camera. And I do think that Fuji did a rather good job with the grip for the XS10. For such a small body, the grip is really quite comfortable to hold even for big hands. And speaking of things that are big, Big lenses. It's a camera with a small body, so when you throw on some of the big boy X-mount lenses like the 8 to 16 or the new 50mm f1.0, then proportionally speaking, it's probably going to look and feel a little off. But a smaller body also means a more minimal layout. On the X-S10, you won't find some additional physical controls, like the continuous shooting mode selector, that's now reduced to a button to access those settings. There's also no physical focus mode selector, and the Q menu button has now moved to the top of the camera beside the ISO button, since there's no ISO dial, so there's an ISO button. But this little red button here is, I believe, the first I've seen on a Fuji camera a dedicated movie record button. It works in stills mode as well. It starts rolling a clip if you press it in stills mode. And while testing out the camera, I actually accidentally bumped this little lever in the corner of the camera here. And what happened next caught me completely by surprise. A pop-up flash. Haven't seen one of these in a while. The XS10 is also using those good old W126S batteries. They are the same kind of batteries you would find in the X-T3, so not the new kind we saw in the X-T4, but this is a very common battery, especially among Fuji cameras, so it can be seen as a convenience in that sense. You've also got a maximum continuous shooting speed of 8 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, and it sounds a little something like this. Now the EVF on this thing, if you compare it to something like, say, the X-T3 or X-T4, it is a fair bit smaller and slightly lower resolution, and I also would have preferred for the eye cup to be a little more rubbery. It's not the softest feeling eye cup ever, so not my favorite EVF from Fuji, but I would still say that it's a very usable and acceptable one for a camera like this. Also, this, an unlabeled button right beside the EVF. Now, one would think that this is probably the viewfinder display toggle button on the basis of, I don't know, pattern observation. Wrong. It's actually a customizable custom function button. A bit of an unusual placement if you ask me, although you can say that it's placed in a way that's reachable for your thumb, but even that is quite literally 
a bit of a stretch. The screen, like the X-T4, is also a flip-out screen, and it also doesn't hit the mic input because it's placed just out of the way. And if you closely study the ports, which there isn't a lot of ports, you will realize that there is no headphone jack. But the camera does ship with a Type-C to headphone jack adapter, so if you ever want to monitor audio on the X-S10, you will do it through the Type-C port. And given this articulating screen plus the camera's small footprint and relatively lightweight, I would say that this is actually probably one of Fuji's best cameras for vlogging. And despite being a mid-range camera, the X-S10 does come with a very generous set of features. So generous, in fact, that some of these features are probably causing the X-S10 to intrude a little into the X-T4's flagship territory a little. Because features like 240fps slow-mo in 1080p, you won't find that on any other Fuji camera other than the X-T4, and now it's on the X-S10. It also has very similar autofocus performance when compared to the X-T4. Face detection AF works up to negative 7 EV when coupled with that new 50mm f1.0 lens. Not too sure how dark exactly is negative 7 EV, but it does work impressively well in extremely dim conditions. The autofocus is still fast and decisive. There's also IBIS on the X-S10, which means it's one of the few Fuji cameras along with the X-H1 and the X-T4 to have IBIS. Also the GFX100 has IBIS as well, but that's a bit of a different category, I guess. This is also running the same X-Trans image sensor as the X-T3 and 4, so we can expect very similar image quality of these cameras. But point is, this is running X-Trans. Now that, along with film simulations, is enough reason for many photographers to shoot exclusively on Fuji, and the X-S10 has plenty of both. It's got 18 film simulations, which is as many as the X-T4, two more than the X-T3, and actually one more than the X-Pro3. Meaning, as of making this video, this little camera has every single film simulation Fuji has currently released. So in some ways, the X-S10 is certainly right up there with the X-T4 in terms of features, and even beating the X-T3 in some ways. But it wouldn't make sense for a mid-range to be every bit as good as a flagship. So of course, there are some compromises. One of the biggest ones for professional filmmakers is going to be the video recording codex on the X-S10. This can only do 8-bit 420 internally, although it can output 10-bit 422 over HDMI. The maximum bit rate for internal recording is also capped at 200 megabits per second, as opposed to 400 on the X-T3 and 4. The X-S10 can also record only with long GOP inter-frame compression. All intra is not available, so is HLG as well. The X-S10 does not record HLG. F-Log, however, is available, but 4K video maxes out at 30p. You can't do 4K 60 like on the X-T4. Some other little things that are more exclusive to the pro cameras like dual card slots are also absent from the X-S10. We get one SD card slot tucked beneath right beside the battery. Also other things like the maximum mechanical shutter speed is 1 4,000th of a second on the X-S10. So again, what exactly is the X-S10? Who is this camera for? Now, this is an incredibly capable camera with quite the feature set, but stripped to a more minimal form. It's left out many of the physical control dials you might rely on to quickly change settings in the middle of a shoot. It doesn't have the high octane 15 frames per second continuous shooting speed like on the X-T4, so safe to say this camera probably wasn't made with speed as a priority. The way I see it, the X-S10 was meant for that photography enthusiast who wants to enjoy photography, but doesn't need to do it for a living. Because what this camera does offer is the goodness of Fujifilm's finest, their x sensor, their image processing technology, and film simulations in a body design that most modern consumers would be familiar with. Again, this is a $1,000 camera coming with all the film simulations that Fuji currently has to offer, and it's that big of a deal on the X-S10 that, by default, the function dial on the left here is dedicated to cycling through all the different film simulations. And it does make sense because the X-S10 is being marketed quite heavily as a camera meant for SOOC photography, so that's straight out of camera. And of course, film simulations are going to help a lot with that. Like practically, your images are insta-ready the moment you take them. So after using this for a little over a week, those have been my thoughts on the new Fujifilm X-S10. And make sure you check out these other videos of mine or this review is never going to end. That's not true.